What's up everyone, Mr. NoobTube Gamer. Today we're playing Halo 5 in 2021. And we finally made it to the last game in the Halo series, at least until Infinite comes out. But before I covered all the other Halo games, Halo 1, 2, 3, 4, and Reach, this time for Halo 5, things are gonna be a little bit different because for the other Halo games I played, I did it on PC through the MCC and I was playing on keyboard and mouse. But since Halo 5 has still yet to be released on PC, and who knows if it ever will come to PC at this point because kind of weird that all the other Halo games are on PC, but 5 is not. I just don't understand why that is. I'm pretty sure at this point it's the only Xbox One game that hasn't made its way to PC yet. So because of that, I was forced to dust up the old Xbox One and play this game with a controller because there's no native keyboard support on the Xbox One. I think you use like a third-party application to use keyboard, but I don't want to be bothered with all that shit, so I pretty much had to play the game on a controller which I am not used to. I got really comfortable playing Halo on keyboard and also at a higher frame rate than 60 frames per second. I was pretty much able to max the settings out on my 2060 Super. Halo 3, Halo 4, Halo Reach, I was easily getting way above 120 frames. But I was locked to 60 frames on the Xbox One. So that was a huge adjustment. Being forced to play at a lower frame rate and having to use a controller, it took a lot for me to get used to that. And I was struggling at first. My first few games playing this on a controller, it just felt so awkward and not nearly as responsive. But if you've been playing on controller your entire life and you've never played on PC before, this literally has no effect on you because you're used to playing on console and you don't know anything different, right? But I do hope this game comes to PC one day because I feel like it would be even better than it already is. And I would say that Halo 5 is a really good game. It's much better than Halo 4 and even Halo Reach. I'm sure some people might disagree with that. I know that Halo 5 got a lot of mixed reception and people really hated on this game, but I think that had more to do with the single player campaign rather than the multiplayer. I think the multiplayer actually had some really positive reception, at least for a game that was made by 343. And of course, a lot of the OG players are still upset with some of the changes that were made, like Sprint and Jetpacks and all that. Some people just don't like change, and I understand that. People don't like it when things are completely different than what they're used to, because Halo 5 is, you know, very different from Halo 3 in a lot of ways. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think Halo 5 did enough changes while also keeping it a Halo experience at its core, and not deviating too much from the formula. It definitely feels more like Halo than Halo 4 just because you don't have the custom loadouts anymore. It's all weapon pickups, which was a huge part of the balance and momentum of Halo is having to have that map knowledge so you know where the weapons spawn instead of just having your own loadouts and not having to worry about any of that. I think Halo 4 definitely messed with the core Halo experience a little bit too much. And then you end the kill streaks and all this other stuff. People were really upset about that. But Halo 5 did away with pretty much all that shit. And I think a big thing that made Halo 5 more balanced than Halo Halo 4 and even Halo Reach is that instead of armor abilities, like they're all abilities that everybody has innately. So you don't have to choose which one to have. Like in Halo Reach where you have to choose between whether or not you want a jetpack or sprint. In Halo 5, every player has all that. So I think that definitely makes the balancing a little bit better because the armor abilities were never balanced in Halo Reach or 4. And I also like the maps a lot more in Halo 5. I think they're some of the best maps I've seen since Halo 3. I have very little to complain about with any of these maps. They're all great. But I'm sure a lot of you guys clicked on this video because you're curious as to how the player base is holding up almost six years later. Well, I'm happy to report that Halo Halo 5 still has a very strong player base in 2021. I have no problem finding matches pretty much instantly. Even if I'm playing very late at the night, like 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm still able to find full 4v4, full 8v8. I'm even able to get Warzone at certain times, the 24 player mode. You'll definitely have a harder time finding a Warzone lobby than just a regular 4v4, 8v8, but they're still there. And it was a really nice addition to the Halo series, having that big scale 24 player battles, which was larger than anything we've ever seen in a Halo game game at that point. I wonder what we're going to get from Infinite. I'm sure they're going to give us something similar, but not call it Warzone anymore because of the fucking Battle Royale bullshit that we got right now with Call of Duty. They don't want people to get confused. They'll probably change the name to something else, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. What, we're only like four months away from release of Infinite? So I'm definitely going to have to make some update videos uh, in 2022 about the state of all the Halo games next year because I imagine the player base is going to drop drastically once Halo Infinite comes out, especially since it's free to play. But I guess that all depends on how good Halo Infinite actually is. People are hyping it up, but we don't know if it's actually going to be a good game or not. I imagine if it's a shitty game, people are going to be still playing Halo 3, Halo 2, 
and even Halo 5. So we'll see how the player base is affected by Infinite, but keep that in mind. If you're watching this video in like November, December, this video is recorded before Halo Infinite came out, so the player situation might be a little bit different. But for now, Halo 5 maintains a very healthy player base, and that's despite being a game that's only available on Xbox and therefore does not have crossplay with PC since it's not on PC, except for Forge, which PC gamers can build levels and shit, but they can't actually, like, play the core multiplayer. Which is a damn shame, because Halo 5's multiplayer is pretty damn solid. It has the best balancing since Halo 3, the best map design since Halo 3, and is the most fun Halo game since Halo 3. Even though I wouldn't put it up against Halo 3, I think Halo 3 is still better, but for a 3-4-3 game, I think Halo 5 is pretty good. I'm sure my opinion of that will change if I actually get around to playing a single player, because I've heard it's the worst Halo campaign of all time, and it's awful, it's abysmal, I don't know, maybe I should not play it just so my opinion of the game doesn't get tarnished because I'm loving the multiplayer so much, I don't want the single player to leave a sour taste in my mouth, but maybe I will play it one day. I've heard from people online that they hate how the character Locke is portrayed and that he gets more screen time than Master Chief, which is kind of ridiculous for a Halo game, not even focus on Master Chief, but Locke is also played by Mike Coulter who is an amazing actor and I love everything he's a part of, Evil, Luke Cage, He's fucking awesome, so maybe I will like it. I don't know. But I would say whether you're looking into the single player or the multiplayer or whatever, uh, definitely give Halo 5 a chance if you have access to it. If you have Game Pass especially, since you don't have to pay any money for it, you already have it in your subscription, right? No harm in trying it out, and if you don't like it, uninstall it. But me personally, I love Halo 5, and I enjoy it a lot. And this is someone that I love Halo 3, I hate Halo Reach, and I kind of somewhat tolerate 4. And of course I love 1 and 2. I fell in love with Halo 5 the moment that I realized that it doesn't have the same shitty ass matchmaking system as the MCC, where if a teammate leaves, the lobby never fills up. So you're always at a disadvantage against the enemy, so it could be like 2v4 or 1v4. If your whole team leaves, you're pretty much fucked. But Halo 5 actually fills up the lobbies mid-match which I think makes the game so much better to deal with because as much as I love the old games and I love a lot of the games on the MCC, the matchmaking can be very frustrating at times. So as far as that goes, Halo 5 is the smoothest and it also has the smoothest hit detection that I've ever seen in a Halo game. It's just so responsive. But yeah, that's Halo 5 in 2021. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.